So this clinic today is going to be at home body weight workout basics. So I'm, I'm Justin Wise. I'm the former head coach for all of our youth programs and adult programs in, in Mesa Rim, Reno. And I recently moved to San Diego and I will be our customer experience manager in North City. Technically I am now, but obviously I'm at home for the time being. So what we're gonna be doing today is try to provide all of you the tools and resources so that you can work out comfortably at home. Um, for those of you that are probably pretty tired of not being able to access a gym, um, if you're not really sure what you should be doing for workouts, uh, what you could be doing to, to effectively keep yourself in shape um, and not lose your mind being stuck in your house. So I'm gonna go over four different big bullet points and I'll kind of share each one of those in the chat. And then at the end, if you want my more in-depth notes about the information I'm gonna cover, you can just shoot me an email with the contact information that I provide. So at-home workout basics, where do you start? So if you wanna be doing some workout stuff, and obviously there's a plethora of resources online, and it can be kind of overwhelming on like where to start, what do you pick from, like what's gonna work best for you? And a lot of that is gonna be dependent on the individual and what your goals are. So if you're most people probably here, if you're members of Mesa, then you're climbers and climbing might be your primary goal. Um, unfortunately, since we don't have a climbing wall, we're limited in the resources that we can have to, to kind of train some more of the ultra climbing specific, sport specific stuff. But there's a lot of opportunity to train our full body fitness, which we rely on probably way more than you realize for climbing and for most other athletic activities as well. Uh, so today we're going to cover a lot of those and the four different points that I have to be able to do that um, that are going to help you be consistent in your fitness throughout the quarantine. The first is developing a routine. So being able to have a routine that you can have on a daily basis, similar to like a team practice, right, where you get in the habit of consistently doing certain workouts at certain times of the day on certain days of the week. So I think humans like to thrive on consistency and um, routine. So when you have your own routine for your workout, it can be a lot easier to get in the groove. So the second thing is nutrition and rest. We're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. I have a feeling that most people here probably don't have the best sleep schedule right now, myself included, because there aren't really any rules in terms of your sleep right now. So because of that, uh, your, your circadian rhythm can kind of get out of whack. And then that can be some trouble for recovering in terms of working out post recovery. You're like, I'm going to do this workout and I'm going to stay up until like two or three in the morning. Then I'm going to wake up at eight or nine in the morning. And then I'm going to do another workout because I have nothing else to do. Um, you, you won't end up fine tuning your body to the best of its abilities if you don't have some routine in terms of, um, your rest as well. So we'll talk a little bit about nutrition and rest and then building a schedule on what works best for you. So as I said before, everybody here is different. Everybody has different needs in terms of what they want to be good at. So I'm going to provide a bunch of resources here for things that you can kind of like pick and choose what's going to work best for you and kind of develop your own routine and your own workout with some really simple um, suggestions that I have as, as we progress through the clinic. And then at the end, the second half, we're going to just go over proper form. So I'm going to move the computer up a little bit. I'm going to take a few steps back over here and I'm going to demonstrate what I, what my expectations would be for proper form for each one of the workouts that I would suggest for you to do. And after I've gone over those, that'll give us a little bit of time to then just answer questions um, and for me to demonstrate form for anybody if there's a workout that I didn't cover that you're interested in. And or if you have any other questions for me, then it'll just be kind of an open forum. And then Kim will be able to moderate that for us. So we'll start with the first one. I'm going to try and pop through the, the bullet points relatively quickly so that we get to the fun stuff, which is doing some uh, form correction and, and looking at folks and seeing what your form looks like for the different workouts. But developing a routine. So how do you develop a routine? Um, the first point, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this to the chat too, actually, just so that we can be able to to reference this. So the first point would be um, making sure that it's something that you like. <laughs> if, if you pick a workout that you really, really don't enjoy at all, it's going to be really hard to stick to it unless you're exceptionally motivated. It might be harder to be motivated in this environment as well when you're not surrounded by peers and you're trying to just intrinsically motivate yourself to do the workout. 
So when you don't have necessarily a higher level of motivation, if you're doing a workout that's exceptionally challenging for you, then that's probably not the right level of difficulty. Uh, it'll be hard to maintain. And your body could also be telling you that that is maybe too high of an intensity um, for yourself and you could get hurt. So we want to make sure that less is more. Um, you want a workout that's going to be challenging for you and appropriate, but not something that's so challenging that you could get injured or hurt. Um, being consistent, being able to do it on a regular basis. Uh, if you don't like it, you're not going to do it consistently and with proper form. So we don't want your form to drastically deteriorate throughout the course of the workout. So if you set up a workout for you with you're like, okay, so I have 50 squats in mind, right? I'm going to do 50 squats and I'm going to do them in like five sets of 10. And then by that fifth set of 10, your squats are just garbage. Five sets of 10 is probably not the best routine for you. So we want to make sure that our quality in, in the workout is exceptionally high um, so that our form is perfect for everything. That'll greatly reduce the risk of injury for us. And it will also um, increase the likelihood of, of building strength and, and being able to um, get better over time rather than just you, you are what you repeatedly do. So if you're doing poor form a lot, then you'll get really good at doing poor form a lot for the workouts. So we want to build those habits of trying to have really solid form um, and tailoring the workout to you so that you know how much you can do before your form starts to deteriorate. Um, and then the last thing for developing your routine is uh, repetition based versus time based. So I'm going to go over some workouts at the end that you can kind of pick and choose how to put them in. And I'll also do some clinics in the future that give some other options as well. But the, the hallmark of like developing stuff is like, okay, I'm going to do five sets of this many reps right? So you can develop your workout in that sense. Or you could say every two minutes, I'm going to do this many things, and then I'm going to stick to that schedule. So the, the second option that, that I provided that time base is more of a hit schedule. So like high intensity interval training, and I'll be doing a clinic about that later. This clinic will focus a little bit more just on what does proper form look like for these workouts? How do you get yourself on that regular schedule? Um, but those are your two options, right? So you can have that consistency in terms of, um, you know, okay, I do this many repetitions and I do this many sets of this workout. And then it's really easy for you to gauge your progress over time and to hold yourself accountable. Um, and then that's easy. Then all of those things compound on top of each other and that's easier for building your routine. Um, if you do time-based, it's the same thing. It's always this amount of time, right? Uh, but today we're going to talk a little bit more on repetition focus because I'll be going over time focus and hit training in another clinic. And we really want to focus on good form today. So we're going to go over the good form and just have a set number of things we're going to do and put that together. So that's the first bullet point, developing your routine. So making sure that it's something that you can have great form with that isn't overkill and you can be consistent. The second bullet point, I'm going to add it to the chat here um, as well, um, is one that you probably weren't expecting to hear um, coming to this clinic. You were like, cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work out really hard. And instead now um, we're gonna touch on this, which is nutrition and rest. So if you are going through some of these workouts and pushing yourself substantially, um, let's say you're a highly motivated team child and <laughs> you have nothing else to do right now except to work out, right? Um, you might find yourself working out to an excessive degree and then also not eating the best things because you're stuck at home and not having the best rest because you're stuck at home. So what I would suggest is making sure that you are having your proper protein intake on a daily basis. Uh, that's going to vary by the individual, but just keeping an eye on like what your diet is. Um, is going to be really helpful for these workouts. If you're going into a workout on an empty stomach and you haven't eaten anything that day um, and you're doing it at different times every day, then you're going to have extremely varying results each time you do it. And as someone that's working out, you probably are motivated and want to see results. So it can be frustrating to see your results go all over the place. The more you control in terms of your nutrition and your rest, the more consistency you'll see in your results as well. So if you are trying to work out at different times throughout the day, you're eating different types of food every day, you're, sometimes you're eating before you work out, sometimes you're not, 
Um, all of that kind of goes back to developing your routine. You, you really need to make sure that you have um, consistency in your nutrition. And then the second part of that is your rest. So I'm guilty of this as well right now, having a really just completely ridiculous sleep schedule. Um, getting back to a normal sleep schedule is, is important. And even if those hours are shifted greatly from what your, your normal was when, when before the quarantine, um, that's, that's okay. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a set hours of like, all right, every night I'm going to bed at 10 every morning. I wake up at this. It could be every night I go to bed at like two or three and every day I wake up at this time, as long as it's consistent. Right. So what we're going for is consistency in terms of setting yourself up for success and being able to track your results. If you are inconsistent in any of those things, your results will be very inconsistent too. So it's a lot easier to, to do that when you set yourself up for success by eating consistently at the same times each day, getting the same amount of sleep each day, then your body knows what to expect and then it's ready to perform when we get to the workout stuff. Okay, so those are the first two bullet points. The third one is build out a schedule um, on what works for you. So I'll go over like my suggested workout stuff at the end of this, but you're gonna like some of it and you're not gonna like some of the other things. Um, it's good to be well-rounded and to do all this stuff. It's also good to be working out consistently um, over trying something that's well-rounded like a couple times, trying really hard and then being like, eh, I'm not gonna work out for another week, right? You're not gonna see results if you're doing that. You need to be consistent in working out at least three times a week um, with whatever routine we develop at the end of this clinic for you. And you also need to make sure that it's working for you and that you like it. If you really don't like it, it's going to be so much harder for you to be motivated to do it on a regular basis. Um, if you're super motivated and you enjoy kind of, you know, going above and beyond, then that's great. Then that's your own motivation is having something that's that level of a challenge. But if you're someone that struggles to even get through a normal workout where your heart rate gets up pretty intensively, or maybe you, you just absolutely hate push-ups and you don't want to do it. It would be good to maybe then, you know, dial down how many push-ups you have in the workout compared to like what we're suggesting here and just focus on really good form. So um, that's kind of the main, the three biggest points that I have. I have sub, sub points that I can share with everybody, but just doing those three things um, is really important. And the biggest thing too, uh, that's the theme for today is consistency. What we're going for is consistency, not just in your routine, in your sleep schedule, in your um, nutrition, but also consistency in your form. And that's going to be the next portion of this clinic is talking a little bit about form and what that looks like. And, and when we get all these things controlled and consistent across the board, it's so easy to measure progress and you will see progress over time. So I would say right now, um, Ideally, we, most of us, I'm assuming, have an ex excess amount of time on our hands. Uh, we want to make sure that we're not doing an overkill amount of workout stuff. So I'm going to go through now, and we're going to go and through squats, lunges, push-ups, plank, and hollow body are the different workouts we're going to talk about, and I'll demo form for those and what proper form looks like. But I want to make sure that everybody knows that, you know, after, like, practicing this stuff, you don't want to destroy your body and go do a million of these, right? One of my biggest concerns uh, for people that are highly motivated is a uh, much higher risk of tendonitis, shoulder injuries, joint injuries, of people doing all of these body weight workouts like a thousand times because they have the fitness to do it. And they're, they are doing it maybe with pretty decent form, but they're not taking the proper rest time in between and they're just continuing to do it because they're bored your body isn't built to do, you know, a thousand, 2000 squats every single day, right? Uh, there, there needs to be enough appropriate rest time so that you're able to recover between those things. And then you will see tangible growth. The very short version on like why we work out and like what helps in terms of this routine and why that nutrition and rest is key is at the end of each time, what, what's, happening to your muscles is the muscle fibers are literally getting torn apart. Like if you've ever heard the term like, oh, that person's shredded, right? Or they're, I'm going to get ripped like that. It's, it's silly, but it's referencing like that's what's happening to your muscle fibers, right? Your muscle fibers are literally getting like micro tears in them. And then they're building themselves by building more muscle cells, right? By getting intake of protein and like more food and more calories. 
And they don't have the ability to fill those micro tears and to fill and to grow if they don't have time to recover. So you still want to be actively moving on like on your rest days. And I'll give some suggestions at the end of this. But if you're like, I'm going to go do all these, this workout stuff. And then you're like bored like an hour later and say, I'm going to go do all this stuff again. You're going to get not only diminishing returns, but you're at a higher chance of really injuring um, a muscle or a joint. And you're also at a higher risk of then, you know, not really progressing at all. So we want to make sure that after when this is all said and done, we've got a routine, we've got a rest time, and we're not going to overkill. Okay, so now we're done with the boring talking stuff. And, and we've got some reference, references here for that. My email is this, I'm going to put it in the chat. So if you want my full, I have a full sheet that I'm referencing right now as I go through this clinic. If you want access to that sheet, just shoot me an email and I'll shoot it over to you, the, the sheet in full other than just the quick bullet points. Um, so the workouts we're gonna go over today, we're gonna start uh, with squats and then I'm going to set up this computer really quick so that you can see me better and make sure that everybody can hear me okay. Okay, let's see. Move a little bit higher. Okay, can everybody hear me okay still? Can we get thumbs up from people that are there? I think we're good. Got the thumbs up from Kim. Okay, so you might not be able to see my head the best. I'm gonna squat down a little bit so you'll see me like this. So what, what does proper squat form look like? So what we wanna be focusing on when we're, when we're doing a squat is making sure you have an appropriate range of motion, right? And making sure that your feet and your knees are placed in the right way so that we're not putting weird stress on our joints, right? So the way to set ourselves up for success is for a squat, is making sure your feet are shoulder width apart, right? So I'm gonna look and see, and whatever's comfortable for me, maybe might be slightly narrow than my shoulder stance or might be slightly wider. If you wanna practice this too and go along with me, you're more than welcome to. Um, so I'm looking for like a stance where my feet are shoulder width apart, right? I'm going to keep my knees slightly bent, right? As I come to the end of the repetition, I'm not trying to completely lock my knees out. And the reason for that is because I want to continue to keep that stress in my muscles. And I also don't want to run the risk of passing out mid-workout. So I'm going to keep my feet about shoulder width apart, right? I'm going to have my knees slightly bent. As I come down, I'm going to rotate to the side so you can see my form when I come down. Um, as I come down with that shoulder um, shoulder stance with my feet shoulder width apart. I'm trying to get to at least 90 degrees or so. Arms can go out in front of me for balance. As I continue to come back up, I'm trying to put all of that weight directly down through my heels. Okay. So if you find yourself like sticking your butt out, but you're leaning like far forward and you feel the weight on your toes, you're shifting your center of gravity too far forward. So what you want to think about is kind of like you're just sitting, sitting back into a chair, right? So like if I were to take this chair here and put it here, like me doing a squat is me like almost sitting down like really delicately in that chair. Like there's something on there that like I don't want to break, right? So I'm going to like, oh, I'm just going to barely like carefully sit down and then come back up. So you'll also notice that like as I'm doing that, I'm keeping my body in a relative like straight line. Like you can see that my butt is sticking out, but I'm not wiggling my knees or my shoulders I'm not pushing my hands on my quads to come back up, right? If I'm like really tired, like mid set, I'm not going to rely on pushing on my legs a little bit further. Let me see if I can angle this down just a touch so you can see a little bit more. And then you'll also notice that like for some folks to get like excessively deep, like below 90, so all the way down here and then back up puts a lot of stress on your knees and a lot of stress on your ankles as well. So if you are struggling with ankle mobility or if you have pre-existing knee issues, you want to make sure that you're not going past 90 degrees, right? If you're someone and you feel like, hey, my knees are, my knees are strong, my ankles are strong, that's great. Then you can go a little bit deeper. But we want to make sure that we're protecting our joints, especially because these types of workouts are going to be a lot of repetitions over time. Um, so since we're doing so many of them, we don't want to injure ourselves. So the big points for squats making sure that your feet are about that shoulder width apart, not locking your legs out at the end of each rep. Toes, where are toes pointing? They can be forward to slightly turned out. Ideally, we don't have them turned in at all. It's gonna be slightly different for everybody. As we come down and we're sinking into our heels, 
we're trying to keep our knees um, behind our toes if possible, but if they go a little bit further, that's okay. Um, they don't have to be in a spot where, oh man, my knee like just went past my toes slightly. Like that's, that's going to be a repetition that doesn't count. You don't have to be that hard on yourself. Um, everybody is a little bit different, especially with your ankle, mo ankle mobility plays in a lot to that. If you have any pre-existing ankle injuries, that can be challenging on how much weight you can put and how deep you can go in your squat. Okay, so that's squats. And come back over here and look at the next thing. Um, okay, lunges, lunges. So we're gonna go over proper lunge form. Um, and then, well actually maybe before we do that, does anybody want me to assess form really quick for squat? Do we wanna go through that if you have video? And just give, give a thumbs up to the camera and then we can see ya. No, that's totally fine. Okie doke, okay, we're gonna move on. So we're gonna go to, go to lunges. So for lunges, um, what we're looking for, here, let's get back a little bit. I wanna make sure that you can see my knee. So you might miss my head for a little bit of this, but that's okay, because we're looking at this portion of our body primarily. So when, when I'm doing lunges, I'm starting in that same stance that I talked about for squats, right? So my feet are shoulder width apart, my knees are slightly bent. What I'm going to do is take a step forward. So I'm gonna move my right leg forward first for the lunge. I'm gonna take just a normal stride forward, right? I don't wanna like completely reach out as far forward as I can, like I, like I, I was a running stride. You don't want a stride that's that big because you're gonna fall into that foot. So you want to be able to place the foot that's going forward in a controlled fashion. That's gonna be in about a normal, a normal stride. So you'll notice like when before to place the foot a little bit more controlled, your center is gonna shift over your left foot a little bit to reach your right toe. So right toe is gonna to come forward, right? And then you'll notice that as I bend down, I'm gonna have my back knee is gonna to be touching the ground lightly, and my front knee is gonna be bent at 90. So ideally I'm going to a spot where I have this front knee is at about 90 degrees, my back knee is at about 90 degrees, and I come back up, right? So when I'm doing that lunge, I want that touch on the ground to be slow and controlled, right? So you'll see like if people get hyped, and especially if you're doing um, time-based workouts, a lot of times people will be like, you're bouncing off of that lunge, right? And that's a little bit more explosive and that's fine. But when we're focusing on really solid form, we want to see if we can place that foot controlled and lower controlled and then come back up controlled and then switch the leg, right? We're going to have the same um, issue here in doing a lot of repetitive motions where it puts a lot of stress on your knees. So if you have any pre-existing knee conditions, want to be mindful of that. We're also going to be able to switch things up a little bit halfway through. Instead of just doing the front lunges, um, it's also good to be able to do a reverse lunge too, where that leg is coming backwards and then getting to that 90 degree bend, 90 degree bend in the front and then coming back up again, okay? So generally, how do you structure that in your workouts, right? Like what is a good number of repetitions for this, um, for squats and for lunges? I'm gonna say, so I'm gonna put a little sample workout in here for you guys. Um, so I would say like about four sets of 15 focusing on really good form just as an intro um, is going to be good for anybody that's a little bit more of a beginner to the body weight workout stuff and hasn't done too much of this stuff so doing four sets how much rest time in between sets probably about one minute. So with that, um, if you're doing 15, um, I would alternate front lunges and reverse lunges um, for, for your leg sets. And then also just keeping tabs on how your joints feel. Like every, after, at the end of each set, just kind of check in with yourself and see how you're feeling. Um, being able to identify like muscle soreness and like muscle tiredness versus like um, joint pain um, or joint cramp stuff is, is important. If you are feeling sharp pain, that is a bad sign. You should stop. If you are feeling just kind of like maybe like a little bit of achy pain, that's probably just like muscle tiredness and it's okay to work through. But if that progresses to a point where you're feeling sharp pain, then you want to completely stop. Um, so for the squats and the one just focusing on that really solid, good form, right? If you are doing these slower too, like if this is really easy, if doing 15 squats or 15 lunges is a walk in the park for you, 
try and do these as slow as possible. <laughs> like if you, if you want to like get really solid form, see if you can do like um, five count down, five count up. That would be like the, the more advanced version, right? If you don't have a lot of time and you want to get like solid form in, but you also like want to feel a little bit of a burn, this would be a good way to up the difficulty is to slow down that rep so that you're using consistency and control the entire time. Okay, so we went over that stuff. Um, we're at 32. I'm gonna try and end at uh, 40. Um, we'll go a little bit over if that's okay, Kim, since we started five minutes after, and then I'll ask a, a couple questions, have some time to see if I have questions from the group, if there was anything that I didn't answer, and get some, get some resources from you, you guys as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, push-ups, so push-up form. So I'm going to go over push-up form. Okay. So push-up form. So what does the proper push-up look like? So you could ask like five different personal trainers that, and they'd give you five different answers, right? So what, what my standard is for a proper push-up really depends on what you're trying to work on, okay? So the push-up in general is going to work a lot of your core strength. It'll also work your shoulder stability and then your triceps and your chest. Depending on how you angle your elbows, you're going to put more effort onto your triceps or on your chest. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. So generally, the more narrow of a stance I have, the, the more um, effort I'm going to have to put into my triceps. Uh, the wider I get, the more that's going to go into my chest, like my pec major, right? Um, and then angling of my elbows. The more out I am, the more I'm using my pec major and my chest the more in I am, the more I'm using my triceps, okay? So we get a lot of different um, variations of how to do those. I'd recommend switching things up. So if you're doing uh, pretty solid form, you can switch from like um, narrow, medium, wide, elbows in, elbows out, and so on. In terms of like how deep we're going for a repetition, it's gonna be the same thing that I said for squats, 90 degrees for a solid repetition, right? if you have the joint ability and the shoulder mobility to go deeper than that, right? That's great, but that's gonna put a lot of extra stress on your joints. So if you have any sort of pre-existing conditions, if you have tendonitis, if you're someone that struggles a lot with tendonitis, you might want to avoid that full range of motion because that's gonna put a lot of extra stress in your elbows, okay? So what does that look like in terms of setting yourselves up for a push-up? Hands are gonna be about shoulder width apart, and I'm going to try and spread my hands like as wide as possible, right? Like I'm going to spread my fingers out really wide to make sure that I don't have too much stress on my wrists. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure that my feet are in a narrow stance so that there's more weight on my hands. So if I stick my feet in a really wide stance, then that's going to kind of balance me out a lot easier. And it's, I'm not going to rely on my core strength as much for, for the push. Um, if my feet are in a narrow stance, this is the same, we'll talk about this a little bit for plank two. My feet are in a narrow stance and I'm only on my toes and my feet are right next to each other. I'm going to have to engage my core a lot more to be a lot more stable. And a lot of that stability is also going to come from my shoulders, right? So we're going to try and keep our, keep our feet close together. So we'll have our hands about shoulder width apart and scoot out a little bit back further here so you can see me. Hands are going to be shoulder width apart. I'm going to fan my hands out a lot. My toes are going to be together quickly and you can see my shoulders are stacked over my elbows and my wrists right? My feet are together close and my back is flat. I come down to 90 degrees. So until there's a 90 degree bend and then completely back up. If I feel comfortable, then I can do the full range of motion. So I come all the way down until my chest is to the floor and then all the way back up. So I can have my elbows in close to my sides, right? Focus on my triceps. I can get a little bit of a wider stance and angle my elbows out to have a little bit more of a focus on my pec majors, right? So that's proper push-up form. Again, so how would you incorporate this? I would say same thing. Four sets of 15, try and focus on making sure that um, not only is your form good, but again, like I said before, if this is too easy for you, try and do a five count down for each one. Slow it down a lot. Or if five count is too hard, try and do like a three count. And then that'll make it a little bit more challenging in terms of being stable and controlled. Okay, so we've got squats, lunges, push-ups. Talk about plank really quick. Um, and then that's gonna be that's gonna be it. Can it can everybody still hear me? Yeah? Okay, good. 
Um, so plank, what does proper plank form look like? Um, again, you could ask four or five different personal trainers this question. You would get four or five different answers. It all depends on what you're trying to get out of that plank. I'm gonna incorporate those same principles that I was kind of talking about with the push-ups, where instead of having a really wide stance with your feet, we're trying to keep them narrow and a little bit closer together so that we're focusing on more core stability and shoulder stability. Uh, my, my big things for plank in terms of how you can do it properly is I hate to see readjustments. So we would do for team, for climbing team, we do plank off sometimes, and the kids would want to hold plank for as long as possible, but their form just deteriorates after the first like two minutes or so, right? So then, so then they're trying to hold pl a, a plank, right? Which is really them basically like in downward dog with like a really wide stance of feet. So what we want to focus on is making sure that our back is completely flat, similar to that push-up position. And we're just going to be doing that on our elbows. And if you're doing this properly, especially if you do this at the end, after doing some of the squat lunge stuff, you should feel it through your quads and through your core. It shouldn't just be all on your shoulders. It shouldn't be your shoulders just starting to like give out in the beginning. It should be like your whole like front side of your body here, including then like your glutes and your quads too and your legs um, should be struggling a little bit as well. So I'm going to demo that again. So we'll look over on the floor over here. So again, same, same stance. So I'm going to take uh, my arms and place them about shoulder width apart, right? Make fists here in the front. And as I set myself up, I'm trying to keep my feet close together. So they're going to be close together. And my shoulders are going to be stacked directly over my elbows. I don't want my butt up too high, like approaching downward dog. I want it down so everything is nice and even, right? And then I'm just going to hold this consistently the whole time. So my biggest thing for isometrics is making sure that when you're doing an isometric, that's what you're doing, right? You're not adjusting. You're not going to like, oh, I guess I'll do side plank for a little bit and shake out. You're going to stay in that isometric and you're going to breathe through it for a long time. Um, and, you know, Kim would have some experience with this with, with the yoga stuff. It's, it's similar to like holding yoga poses and like breathing, breathing through yoga. Like that's what the goal is, right? We're not trying to readjust. We're not trying to get into a position where it's like, oh, well, I could hold this for so much longer if only I shook this hand out for a little bit. And it's like, well, but that's the point. That's what makes it harder is trying to be stable the whole time. And as you start to feel that like increased resistance, that's the difficulty of the plank. So I challenge yourself, like I see a lot of planks where people will kind of shake out or just be like, my goal was this time. Um, the time-based time goals are great. Like if you want to hold a plank for four or five minutes, that's awesome, but I would much, be much more impressed with a plank that's just like even just one minute of like absolutely perfect form than like a three minute plank with really, really poor form that's just inconsistent. Um, so I'm gonna add this to the workout list as well. So we'll say, one two minute plank at the end again, um, I'm hesitant to put a time frame on there because that's gonna vary for each person. It's really until your form deteriorates, right? That's, that's kind of the bigger thing that I'm looking for. Um, how to check in on your form and to watch form during this is challenging, right? If you're doing these workouts by yourself, my biggest recommendation would be to set a phone up um, with some support to be able to check your form. It doesn't need to be the whole workout. I would say just check in with yourself like every now and then and see what your form looks like. I would recommend filming at the end of the workout and the beginning of the workout. So film like what your what does your form look like the first set, right? On the first rep. Then like compare that to like what your form looks like on the last set on the last rep, right? Ideally, it looks the same. It's just, there's a lot more struggle happening on that last rep, right? Like you don't want to see the struggle being that you're compensating by moving your, your, your limbs in different spots to make things easier for you. You want the difficulty to be from just the sheer number of things that you've done and from muscle fatigue, not from like, oh, since my muscle fatigue is fatigued, I want to make it easier on myself by then like having like a, a wider stance or like maybe it's easier for me to have a slightly more narrow stance or just slightly going to downward dog during my plank. Like rather than doing that, just try and keep the best form the entire time. So that's about it for me. Um, 
those are kind of just some super, again, these are super basics. Uh, we were just gonna go over basics today, just in terms of what you can do to kind of develop, uh, make sure that the form for a few basic things is right. And then also making sure that uh, you can have the resources that you need to develop a routine. And then also to give you my contact information if you have further questions. But I wanna open up um, the floor right now for questions at all. If anybody has questions about those or if there was